So you can hear me? Yes, I can, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> waving, but I couldn't see anything else. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm how are you? Good, yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Sorry hey, if you so, hear crazy sorry? birds in the background. There's like, yeah. I feel like I'm having a garden party in my house, like outside my house, but anyway, <laughs> to disclose that before we start. But. Wait, so you're an SFU athlete, but you are from Australia. Yes. So yeah, so I'm from Sydney um, in Australia, but um, I just temporarily came home for a few months just while I could, because I haven't, I've been trying to get home for about a year. So oh. um, yeah, so I, we just thought, okay, while I have a few, you know, months that I can be online, right, I'll, I'll come home yeah. and I'll try from here. But yeah. Oh, pretty cool. Like, so you were, you were kind of like born in Australia and then you came over to SFU to do your sport? I was actually born in Vancouver um, and then we we all moved to Australia when I was about six um, when I was in kindergarten and then yeah I've been growing up here and then I decided oh maybe I'll go back to the back to the homeland <laughs> to, to do some um, athletics and, yeah yeah hey um so yeah I'm, I'm my name is Joshua um, I'm with the rec promo team um what we're doing right now is essentially sorry, um this is recorded because uh, we are kind of promote um, like athletes and um, like how they are doing and throughout the whole pandemic and what they've been doing like in terms of school studies and like we're trying to bridge we're trying to bring like the athletes over to the students because a lot of students tend to not be aware <laughs> that we have a pretty active uh, varsity team yeah <laughs> so um I find very interesting <laughs> that's the case pretty? but I find that very interesting. You always see the athletes walk around with the backpacks and the <laughs> yeah, but no, like it seems like it's a very close knit, knit group um, among the athletes. Mm -hmm. But then anyone outside the teams are pretty much oh, we have this team. <laughs> yeah. That's that's fair. That's fair. So yeah, um, I'm with the Rec Promo team. I've been volunteering for about since 2017. Yeah, and I'm almost done school. Nice. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh yeah, let, let's let's begin, I guess. Um okay. yeah, so do you, <laughs> um, do you mind sharing like who you are and um like what sports you play and what got you into that sport? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um so my name's Sydney. Um I'm a high jumper on the track and field team. Um, what got me into the sport was I did a sort of a youth um, track and field program um, when I lived in Australia and I sort of realized oh I'm actually really good at this um, and I, I kind of took it from there I was just sort of trying all the different events and then I realized I really like doing the jumps um, so yeah I've been doing probably high jump probably since I was um, seriously since I was in about grade eight um, but wow. yeah, that is pretty is quite a long time, but but yeah what was it like doing high jumps like what because it's a, it's a, I'm assuming it's a track and field kind of sport, right? Mm -hmm. so yes, it's one of the events, yeah. How do you train for it? Like, do you, what, what kind of, um, is there specialized training for it? Or do you just train along with like, um, just the usual cardio and strength training kind of thing? Yeah, for sure. So um, we have our own jumps coach. His name is Gerald. He's awesome. Um, and he um, basically makes a program for us we do a lot of um plyometric stuff which is just like a lot of quick bouncing um a lot of just really quick movements our sport is different to most of the other track and field sports um or the other events just simply because we're trying to put like all of our power into one jump which is pretty crazy to think um so it's, it's a bit different like that so we do a lot of weights training that's just you know one big powerful movement um just mm -hmm. yeah a lot more power compared to the other say like the distance people they they will do a lot more um sort of like sure. sustained movements um and yeah so we just do a lot of, we do some sprints as well with um tom the sprints coach which is awesome um, and yeah, a little bit of cardio here and there, but mainly the power stuff. That's actually pretty cool because um, I also do kind of like powerlifting. So mm -hmm. the goal of achieving that that burst of power in that short period of time is it's pretty amazing. Yeah, exactly. That's so the like, whole the whole aim of the the event, which is really right? interesting. You think, oh, it must be you know so difficult, but honestly, that it's it's quite simple if you think about it. It's just that's yeah. all you're doing, right? So yeah. So how how do you feel like when I'm assuming 
at that split second, you jump over like that bar. Like, what does it feel like? Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's the best feeling in the world. Um, it, you just feel like you're kind of flying, but everything happens mm. so fast, to be honest. I, you, you sort of, you take off and you don't really remember what happens. You just, yeah, you just sort of know that feeling of like, oh, I'm flying, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, a lot of the other track and field events are very like, you know, sustained. I mean, even the sprints, mm -hmm. it happens quite fast, but nothing happens as fast as, as doing a jump. Right. So it's, it's a really, it's almost like a euphoric feeling. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you ever like considered doing maybe those um, like pole vaults kind of thing? Like, does it translate over? <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess so. It? I mean, the jumping mechanics when you're taking off, very similar, but going over the bar, totally different. And oh. I'm a bit scared that I'll like go up and then fall back down or I'll, the pole will snap and I'll like fly to the universe or something, <laughs> something will happen. But I thought it could be cool, but it takes, that is, that is something that it takes a lot of a lot of technique and a lot of training mm -hmm. to, to actually even just do it safely. Um, so it's, it's, it's completely different ball game, that one, yeah. But that's actually pretty impressive because um, if, if you were to do something else other than your current sport, what would you do? Oh, um, in the track and field realm or just completely different? It's just completely different, whatever you okay. choose. It would probably be basketball. I, I did basketball for uh, maybe seven years but it was never seriously I just did it sort of with a fun team um, like recreational um, which was really cool but I think it's good because I can sort of put the jumping in there I can you know get the rebounds and <laughs> that kind of stuff I was just never good technically enough I never got the baskets in I, I would just get the rebound and pass it to someone else um, mm. but I think basketball, that's like a lot of I miss about like doing an individual sport is that team sort of feeling that mm. I mean we have a fantastic track team you know we've got lots of connect me like yeah lots of friendships and and we it's a really connected feeling between all of our um all the different athletes in the track team but it's different when you're you know on a team where you're actually doing the sport together mm -hmm. at the same time you know you're really working together because without you know the rest of your team you're not going to be successful in something like basketball right so you need to work together but that's yeah so it would be basketball probably right so within your your own track and field team itself in the high jumpers um, do you guys have to compete pretty often? Like how, how um, does it work? Oh, sorry, did you finish the question? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. There's, like, how does it work? Like, do you have to oh, like set work? different standards among all of you, and then you guys try to like beat each other in like the height? You know? Yeah, well, I mean, all of us were very um, unique athletes. We do jump very differently. So our training, even though we're training all together, it's very different. Um, but yeah, generally, we we do usually compete a lot. We usually, you know, go down to the US a lot with the NCAA. Um, mm -hmm. And that's really cool. And, and we'll compete. Obviously, you know, the guys will compete together and the girls will compete together. Um, and yeah, really, we just sort of um, help each other. We'll cheer each other on as we're going, you know, as the heights are going up. Um, but I mean, training wise, we, we all jump very, like the guys will jump a similar height together. And so will the girls. Um, but again, like our, my coach is very good at making it really individualized. So we'll, it'll, as much as it, you know, we do it together, we, we make sure that we'll, we're at individual heights that will help us with whatever we're trying to work on, um, mm -hmm. which is great. But, but yeah, I mean, with, with, competing it's it's really fun we do compete quite frequently usually usually we'll do almost every week maybe one every two weeks um competitions just based on where the competitions are and you know whether we can get there and things like that right now obviously not but i know that they're doing some finally some sanctioned meets still just with the sfu group now um mm -hmm. which is awesome so that, that's really exciting obviously i'm not going to be there but um <laughs> at the moment but i'm doing my own things here just you know doing can practice, you, can you like but... compete remotely based off yes. um, like maybe with a school or something within your area and then ma match it? Mm -hmm. I mean, generally, so the way the track and field works is that as long as you have officials there, mm -hmm. your, your height will be recorded officially and it counts as any, like any other height, right? Which is great. It's, it's a really good thing. So I've been able to do um, some competitions here with officials. So, so I've got now, you know, some, some rankings and some heights that I can put on record um, yeah. that I'm sure that my other teammates will get soon as soon as they're doing their meets. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I've been able to not with them, obviously, but in spirit, mm -hmm. spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Next tip. Mm. With that in mind, um, how do you train remotely then? Given given like SFU, um, I'm assuming the SFU athlete athletics team trains together um, mm -hmm. with you in Sydney right now like do you have to 
do you train by yourself or do you record yourself training and then um, your coach will will like guide you according to that or do you train with like a separate team right now in, 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 in Australia? Um, so a little bit of both of what you said. So I, I'm training, um, yeah, mostly by myself right now. Um, I'm usually getting someone from my family to come and record me so that we can send them that film to Gerald and he can um, look through it and, you know, give me some advice and tips. What he would usually do when I was with him. Um, I know before I left, because I left in about, yeah, just beginning of January. Um, before I left, we were, you know, making sure everything was super safe. We were wearing masks when we were training. Um, it was a bit hard because we were indoors because it was so mm -hmm. cold. Um, but we were, yeah, just, you know, keeping the groups really super small um, and just, yeah, making sure that we were, yeah, doing it safely while being able to, you know, support each other, which was nice. Um, but honestly, when I've, uh, I've come here and, and it hasn't really changed. Um, mm -hmm. I've, even though I'm training by myself, I still get the support from, the other members of my group um, and I still get the support from my coach which is really awesome um yeah I, I didn't think that would happen so that's yeah it, it's really great <laughs> and yeah it just we we just sort of communicate really frequently and make sure that we're supporting each other yeah okay it's pretty amazing like I see in your background you have a bunch of medals <laughs> yeah. like a bunch of trophies bang <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. just, you know, the, the it's a childhood bedroom. You need to display yeah. it, right? This is <laughs> what I love. Don't necessarily do that anymore. Usually it's like the the track um, numbers that I put on my wall. You know, it's a bit of a memorabilia <laughs> from when I was competing. Um, but yeah, a few trophies here and there. Wait, what, what are you doing in SFU? Like, what are you studying? I'm doing health sciences at the moment. Um, I'm yeah, I'm enjoying it generally. I might change. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I'm just sort of trying out a, a little bit of health sciences, and I think it's going to be really relevant for yeah. the future based off of our current <laughs> circumstances, which is really for exciting. sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. We um, so which, like, when did you enter SFU? Sorry. When uh, which year did you enter SFU? Um. So I came in uh, January. 2020 so i've been yeah just just over a year now so i'm in my second year technically i came halfway through the year um and yeah i guess i'm hoping to graduate 2024 2025 we'll see hopefully depending on how fast i can you know <laughs> get everything done but it's not like i want to get out of here i like it but yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm assuming then is the end goal something like an mcat or maybe do some mbb courses and eventually hopefully do something in that area? Maybe. I haven't really figured that out yet. Um, initially, for the last few years, I've wanted to get into pharmaceuticals. Um, I think that would be really cool. Um, both my parents were in pharmaceuticals, so I thought, oh, it might be, you know, a calling for me. Um, but maybe. It just depends, yeah, whether I, how long I want to spend in school and if I want to go mm -hmm. into, you know, do a medical degree and become a doctor or specialize somewhere. I know I want to specialize in something, but I don't know what quite yet. Yeah, we're working on it. Really cool. <laughs> so do you have any tips um, and advice for people who are interested in your sport, um, but are not able to play competitively? Because yeah, <laughs> so sure. your sport so, is pretty niche, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So honestly, it would be just, just give everything a go. There's actually a lot of um, sort of lower profile track meets that run throughout the summer. Um, I know in mm -hmm. both Canada and Australia. And honestly, it's it's easy to... Um, compete you can actually get a membership with like um, Athletics Canada like a non-competitive membership which doesn't cost a lot um, mm -hmm. and you can just sort of go and have a go at um, doing a lot of different just different disciplines and just see which ones you like see if you're more of a you know distance person or if you're more of a power person or if you really like you know doing a 400 meter of hurdles mm -hmm. I don't know it, it can be anything and there's and the, the, the good thing about um, this sport is that there's such a massive variety of different yeah. things. Everything is so different. Even if you're like, oh, I don't want to run, try doing like discus, try doing throws, mm -hmm. javelin, something, right? And that, that's, that's the best thing. It's, it's one, I think it's one of the best sports to just give it a go and mm -hmm. see how it goes. And you can sort of, you know, round up your friends and, you know, go have a, try have a long jump with them because <laughs> why not? And no one will judge you because I yeah. even know people that, you know, that, that don't do it competitively or, um, and they've done this throughout their whole lives. Like I have people that I've competed with that are, in their 40s and 50s that are still you know just giving it a go because they enjoy it right so that i think and then you can actually go and progress to like masters and do you know 90 year old 100 meter sprints and things like that <laughs> awesome 
Um, but yeah, just, just give everything a go. Um, there are lots of opportunities. There are so many meets. It's not like, you know, there's just one thing in the year. There's just every weekend, there's something that's happening. And, mm -hmm. and also there's in all these different places too, with different tracks and different surfaces. And you can, you know, go drive 20 minutes away and just visit somewhere new for the day right which is really yeah, exciting yeah. so yeah and like given your sport is pretty niche do you do you often have to find yourself um do you find yourself often having to look for um specific places to train at because um not all tracks have that high jump kind of uh platforms and the support right so do you have mm -hmm. to like actively google places and then find it like, yeah, that is the one thing it's it's a little bit difficult. It's quite mm -hmm. restrictive in that sense that you need to have the equipment to sort of be able to really practice doing high jump, right? Or even like long jump, you need a, a sand pit. But mm -hmm. to be honest, most of my training, I don't do on a high jump mat, which is oh. great as well. So most of the time I'll be in the gym doing, yeah, as I said before, some power stuff, or mm -hmm. I'll be doing some sprints. You can even do sprints on a field or something like that, right? But I guess you do have to find... Um, you know, a spot that, that works um, mm -hmm. because yeah, you need to do it safely and things like that. So you need the proper yeah. equipment. Um, but yeah, as long as you happen to have a, you know, track nearby, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like for me, my track is 10 minutes away and I'm so lucky oh. that I have that. So yeah. I can go whenever I want and it's, yeah, it's fantastic. So <clears throat> just, just flex right now. What's your highest? <laughs> right now, as of right now, it's um, one meter 70. So it's it's I would say that's medium for for um jumpers that are you know, oh, tall are you? oh I'm like five ten ish. So I'm like well, I think that's like one seventy seven around you one jump one eight. Wow that's, not that's quite. I will say that I can jump over most people in my family. So that's exciting. Oh that's my cool. goodness. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I can jump over my mom. That's nice. Um, which I say, I, I say that's a flex. I don't know what you think. But <laughs> what's your like, goal? Like, how, how high do you plan to jump? Like, what what's your sweet spot? Like, what do you hope to achieve? My goal, at least this year, I'd really yeah. like to get over one seventy five. Um, but I think my career goal, it would be mm. so cool if I could jump over one eighty. That would be fan that would be like my dream. Even though you know the Olympians, they'll be jumping like. 195 yeah. almost two meters <laughs> but for me as you know i like a high level but still intermediate i think i'd really like mm. to jump over 180 that would be really cool and that's the point where you start to you know really get into the competitive yeah stuff right with the competitive people it's, it's all about like you know meeting new people at new different you know different meets more higher profile meets and lower profile meets so mm -hmm. having a good range is it's really important it's really yeah it makes the the whole uh, sport a lot more fun Dang, that's pretty intense, though. Yeah, it is a little bit. <laughs> you have to, in order to train for power, then, do you often do, like, box jumps and, like, weighted, weighted sprints and stuff like that? Um, yeah, we do. So, uh, and a lot of times in our programs, we use boxes and we also mm -hmm. use a lot of medicine balls, like, throwing things. You'd be surprised how much like power, you know, throwing a medicine ball needs that whole action. Like you need to yeah. really use your legs and recruit everything, to do, which is very similar to high jump, right? So yeah, we, we do, yeah, just again, it's a lot of plyo stuff and yeah. quick knee drive movements and all that. Yeah, it's it's seeming, it seems really complicated, but honestly, it's not that, if, we, if you look at it, it's a lot of things that, you know, other non high jumpers would be doing. Like I know a mm -hmm. lot of people that just do box jumps just because they, they like jumping like and- we do the exact same thing yeah <laughs> you see all those fitness um youtubers and they keep doing uh super high jumps that's mm -hmm. crazy yeah it's exactly you're all about working on your vertical you see everyone obsessed yeah. with their vertical you know, <laughs> yeah. the same thing with us. totally the same thing <laughs> so like do you mind describing what your day is like um with with workout with school and all that Mm, yeah, for sure. So um, at least while I'm here, I have to get up usually pretty early in the morning because of the time change. I have to, you know, start doing classes. So usually I'll get up at about five, start doing classes at 530, <laughs> um, which is quite early, it's, especially because now we've got daylight savings. And, oh, it's a whole oh, yeah. thing. Um, yeah. And then I'll do classes for, you know, three, four hours maybe. Um, and then I'll usually get up 
go for a walk with my dog likely. And then I'll start sort of, yeah, my training for the day. So it'll be like a weights session in the morning. I'll, I'll go do strength, which I'm lucky at yeah, my strength um, coaches, TJ and Brad, they've sent that over to me, which is really great. So I can do that in the gym here. Um, and then I will probably do a little bit more school, um, have some lunch maybe with my mom. And then usually after lunch, I will go to the track and do get a track session in do yeah some some sort of a jumps um or you know it'll be a jumps or a sprint depending on the day um yeah and then i'll usually yeah come home try and you know do a bio lab or something like that mm -hmm. something that i've missed um and then try to get, get to bed early because <laughs> i need to get up early yeah again the next the next morning so i'll and i'll fit in somewhere you know a beach recovery usually as well because yeah. i've got the beach about 10 minutes away which is awesome oh, so, so my legs in the water um which is <laughs> awesome that's, that's a fantastic way to end your day i will say you watch the sunset put your legs in the water it's fantastic i love it what, it's what, great what's the weather right now in australia is it hot it, it's still it's pretty summer, warm right? yeah it's well it's kind of ending summer so it's it's fall now um it's all backwards <laughs> um so oh, yeah, yeah it's on the opposite end of the wow yeah it's just it's totally flipped we're we're still mm. you know it's still about 25 degrees you know on the daily which is yeah. so nice it's <laughs> so nice and it's, it's, it's so, so rain been back? sorry how long have you been back um since uh january yeah so about oh, three okay. months ish now so you got into you got into the winter phase and then you hop right into summer. Mm -hmm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The warm. It was it was although it was a bit difficult because I had to do like a hotel because they the way they do it is they do hotel quarantine here. Mm -hmm. So I had to sit in a hotel with no opening windows for two weeks and I'd look outside and I'm like, oh my gosh, it looks so warm, but I can't be outside. <laughs> Which is a bit difficult. That was a bit challenging, but yeah. it was worth it to yeah, to see my family and to, you know, have some time in my my home. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So like, um, how have you been actually coping with the new online class format? Because you mentioned doing labs, you mentioned um, waking up early. How do you do labs while online? Yeah, so I think um, for, especially for like science students and things like that, we, yeah, you're right, where we do a lot of labs and things like that. It's mainly um, online sort of interactive labs, you know, things where you'll drag little animals into a pen and then study the numbers and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and and it's it's been interesting to say the least. I think everyone's experiencing that, that it's 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 different, but it, it works. I mean, I, I definitely don't think that it's as good as, you know, being in person, having an in-person mm -hmm. lab, I think doing hands-on things like chemistry lab, it's so difficult, but yeah. we just write a lot of lab reports and, and do simulations and things that, you know, we, we imagine how things would have happened, um, mm -hmm. which is good. But I mean, coping with online classes, yeah, again, as, as everyone else, it's been quite difficult to to switch over and and I'm, I'm finding actually I've, in the beginning it was really like time management because all of a sudden it just seems like you have much more to do because mm -hmm. uh, you know I don't know it's just the, the professors will upload more more, more lectures more hours of lectures yeah. more content you have more ex like you know a lot of extra quizzes and just mm -hmm. a lot of extra stuff so that was quite difficult but I think now it, we're, I'm finally starting to realize you know how to manage my time and and how to do certain things that i didn't know how to do before you know how to make sure that i'm really attentive like during my lectures breaking it up into smaller smaller little sessions which i think other people are doing as well i know from mm -hmm. you know my other friends that they're doing the same thing um mm -hmm. but yeah it's just we're just adapting now it's just you know we're finally realizing how to to cope which is which is nice yeah right. that's, that's pretty good mm -hmm. and Oh, I had a question, but I don't remember what. Mm. So, on average, how many classes do you take every semester? Um, so, as an athlete in the in the NCAA, I have to be taking um, twelve credits. Uh, if that, so usually it's about yeah four or five classes generally. Um, sometimes I'll take more, um, but mm -hmm. it just depends. This semester I'm taking four. Um, taking exactly 12 credits, which is good. It's been good so far. Um, and I know we have to pass a certain amount of credits throughout the year. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what we've been doing. And I think it, it's been okay. It's been, yeah, it, it's always a bit challenging to, you know, some people take three, some people take more. So it's always challenging mm -hmm. to take four or five classes, but you get through it. Um, yeah, you, you learn, again, you learn to adapt and yeah. So it's, is your whole um, school life essentially focused just on 
on school and training. Do you do you work part time on the side, or is just is it just academics and sports all all the way? So for me, it's more academics and sports. Um, I know for it depends on the person, honestly. For yeah, I, I haven't found that I've been able to to have a job on the side, which is a little bit mm-hmm. difficult. But I I work really hard through the summer. Mm-hmm. um you know to get get myself by um, yeah. which is good I know some people on my team they've had um you know sort of part-time or casual jobs in the evenings like you know at restaurants and things like that before COVID hit obviously um but yeah it, it's quite difficult to, to manage your time it's a really busy schedule but again you you figure out how to do it I know someone that even you know was working three three full days a week doing this schedule, which is, I think that's, I commend them for that. That is, that is amazing. Um, I don't know how they did that, but, but they did. So you, you work through, you figure it out. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. For me personally, again, I've just been doing athletics and, and academics just so that I have that a little bit of extra time to wind down because I mean, even in the online class format, it's quite, you know, cha- it's quite challenging to, to wind down. You just feel like mm-hmm. all the time you're doing school, you know, on the weekends, yeah. you don't have any break. So that's why I found that it's been better for like my mental health just to take a break and to not be working and to, you know, go for a walk or just do something where I'm just really relaxing, watch a movie with my roommates, I don't know, something like that. Yeah. So on the topic of mental health, um, what are you actively doing to help yourself? So um, I know that the um, SFU SAC, the Student Athletic Society, they're really good with reaching out to us and making sure that, you know, with our busy schedules that we're you know, make, we're looking after our mental health. So right now I'm actually doing like a 30 day mental health challenge where you, you check in every day, which is really fun. And I know anyone can do that kind of stuff, which is great. Um, but just making sure you're really, you know, aware of how you're feeling. And, and if you are feeling, you know, like you're out of, out of depth or you just you mm-hmm. feel like you're not doing well, just to reach out and, and make sure you have a good support system that you can, someone that you can talk to. Um, yeah. That's, I think that's the most important thing, especially because everyone is so isolated right now. It's really important. Um, you know, I know I've every once in a while I check in, you know, with a counselor f- through SFU, yeah. which is great. Um, and that's been awesome just, you know, to talk just about anything that I'm feeling, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm feeling down, which is great. Um, yeah. But yeah, just just making sure you're really aware. I think that's the most important part, because in the beginning, I feel like everyone was in denial. Oh, no, I'm fine. Everyone's, yeah. you know, I'll get through it. It's fine. But you realize <laughs> that, you know, it's more than that. It's really important just to to check in on yourself. And um. <clears throat> To, to wind this up, do you have any encouragement to other students who might be um, experiencing the same <clears throat> the same feelings as you, like um, the difficulty in separating work from school and just without <clears throat> like without the support structures available? So, do you have any like encouragement to give other students? Mm-hmm. Keep going. You're doing great. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you you've managed to survive this far and you've managed to get through it um and it's difficult but you know everyone is experiencing something like that even if it's not the same we're, we're all experiencing a, a sim- something that's very similar um and you know we're all struggling but just, yeah just know that there are other people that are also you know having having some issues um but we're, we're getting by and, and we're learning to be adaptive people. And this is going to be so important for, you know, our character development in the future that we're going to know that we're going to be able to get through hard times like these. Um, and just, you know, if you can, even if you don't feel like you don't have a, have a support structure, if you can just reach out to someone, every, everyone will, you know, want to talk to you. It, it, you know, mm-hmm. we all like having connections um, and it's so important. Like, even if it's your family or just anyone that you feel like, you know, just almost take your mind off of, how crazy the world is and, and just, you know, focus on, you know, catching up with someone and I don't know, yeah, just connecting with someone on that, that deeper level. I think that's, that's so important. That's what's gotten me through right now. It's just, even when I was in Canada, just, you know, calling my family back home almost pretty much every day was just almost oh. a relief for me to, you know, relax just a little bit and go, okay, I'm going to ground myself right now. And I'm going to just, you know, focus on something else other than all oh, the world is nuts. Yeah, <laughs> that that would be my, my advice. Thank you for sharing. And um, do you have anything to say to your teammates and other athletes? Yeah, for sure. Um, hi guys. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> well, no, yeah, you know, I, I miss everyone <laughs> from from over here. Um, and I'm so happy that you know everyone is still you know staying connected and and being able to you know even though we're not super face to face, still being able to be with each other and to train and to support. Um, and I'm so happy that I'm part of that community as well. 
I, I was, wasn't expecting that, you know, moving to SFU when I did, um, you know, back when I started, it was, it's so much better than I thought. Um, and I'm really excited to, to get back into that very soon when I go back, yeah. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Sydney. That's okay. <laughs> for, uh, Have a good, good Friday and a long weekend, eh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So yeah, on the second day of a long weekend, which is great. I'm excited <laughs> to spend that with my family. It'll be good. Nice. Thank you so much. That's yeah. okay. All right. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye-bye.